Adjusting light decay can help to refine your compositions as it allows you to limit the area of effect of your lights. Unfortunately, Blender doesn't have a way that you can adjust this by default, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can create a node setup that will give us complete control over the decay of our lights. We're gonna first start off by going through a recent personal project uh, where I used this exact effect. I'm gonna show you how I did uh, use it within this project. Uh, from there, we're going to go into a more simplified version of that exact scene so that we can, in a more interactive way, go over the node setup and how we can modify it uh, to our needs. And finally, we're going to finish off with going over how we can apply this effect to multiple light types. That being said, welcome to this video. Let's jump on into the first example. All right, in this example of this guiding light personal project, it's what I called it. It's a, basically a rainy alley scene here. I've used the decay effect uh, on this volume kick light. This is the original light source. It's affecting everything and the ray visibility of the object attributes. And then I just created this volume kick version of the light where I just have volume scatter turned on just so it can act exactly as that as a kick light to amplify the effect of the volumetrics within the scene while not affecting anything else. Um, and so to create the setup, this is the node setup here for it. And you can use this as well, um, just as kind of a, a preface to this kind of uh, approach. You can also obviously use it on lights such as this as well that do affect everything. In this case, I only felt that I needed it for that volume kick light, so that's what I used it on. Uh, I did, as you can see, test it on this light as well, but it just wasn't needed. Uh, but going back to that volume kick light, this is the node setup for it. Uh, first of all, we have this math node. So to create the node, you can just go shift A, click on search, and you can just search for it. You can also find them in these little pop-out menus there. Um, created a math node, set it to multiply, and then I set the value to 1000. So this value here, this top value uh, input, will effectively act as your strength adjustment once you plug that in. If we unplug that you'll see the strength was also at 1000 previously and so just to match that I just plug that in and then adjusted that top volume or sorry value input to 1000 just so that the strength uh, lined up uh, and then I have this color ramp uh, here being plugged into the bottom value input of the math node and the interpolation is set to linear. This can also be set to B-spline if you'd like or something else. Uh, B-spline would give you a kind of softer fall off on your decay of the light. Linear is a little bit more abrupt as you can kind of see here uh, when you switch it. It just becomes a little bit more gradual and then linear is just again a little bit more abrupt in, in the decay or the fall off of the light. And it still looks good though, I thought it, it didn't look too jarring or anything, so I kind of stuck with that. And then I have a map range node here being plugged into the factor of the color ramp, and then this light path node is being used here. The ray length is being plugged into the value of the map range, and then these are the settings for that. Uh, I did find this node set up, I think somewhere on, oh, I don't know, maybe it was Reddit or something, or some Blender website. If I can find the link again, I will uh, post that in the description. Um, but that is the setup for it and so I'm just going to go to the render view so you can kind of see uh, just a before and after with the uh, kind of effect in play. Alright so this is the base, this is effectively the final result that I got here and this is it with it turned off. So obviously it's having a, a fair bit of an effect here. I just thought that the volumetrics were kind of just pulling the eye a little bit too much over to the screen right portion of the frame here. Just a little bit distracting is bringing these elements, too much detail in these elements out and I just kind of wanted to keep the focus over here. So that's what I did. You can just kind of see the volumetrics there are more focused and isolated around the door uh, right there. And this is it with it adjusted. In hindsight, I very well may have just kind of pushed it out a little bit more, kind of I feel like helps to if we just go from that to that. It does kind of, it's a very subtle difference obviously, but I just feel like it kind of makes this uh, focal point within the frame pop out a little bit more value wise. Um, in the original, I didn't feel like the character needed much more separation between the darker background. Given the motivating light from the kitchen here and from these two signs, I felt like was kind of separating her out enough as is. But just in terms of the overall value difference, yeah, it might have worked a little better, but I feel like either or kind of works good enough. 
but that is um, how I used it within this personal project. Now in the next scene that I'm going to show you, it's a more simplified version of this. I just brought in this building, removed the textures. It's just a very broken down, simplified uh, scene. And I'm just going to jump in there so I can show you uh, in real time a little bit more how you can kind of use this effect in different ways uh, and what it's doing more uh, specifically. All right, here we are in the simplified version of that alley scene. Now, first of all, as you can see, I've appended in those two kitchen lights from within the eatery of that scene. Now, again, that top light and the object attributes of the ray visibility, it's affecting uh, everything that it is by default here. And then the volume kick light is just affecting the volume scatter. So if we just turn that, that off and that on, not affecting really visibly the volumetrics very much. And then by turning this one on and creating that, we kind of get that additive kind of kick uh, on the volumetrics from that light source. And so now next, let's just jump into the render view quickly. So I've just done these uh, renders here with the light decay effect active and then without it. So this is what it looks like with it. And then this is what it looks like without it, right? So it's the same light strength and everything. All we're really doing is kind of masking off that far distance of the light so that it's only affecting that area closer to kind of the door uh, within the image there on the screen left side. And there we go. So let's just go back to Blender. All right, so now let's click on the uh, volume kick light again. And now what we can do is uh, with that rendered view active in this viewport uh, over here, making sure that that is active. What we can do here is just disconnect the decay effect. And we don't really see a difference here. That's because the value on the math node is matching the value on the emission node and the color ramp is maxed out from the zero to one values. Now what we can do is just connect it back up again though and then start dragging this in. And we'll start to again, get that same kind of effect that we were seeing in those final renders that I just looked at and that we just, that we just looked at there. So there we go. That's all you got to do really, right? So it's pretty straightforward. Now, again, you can adjust the uh, interpolation method. It'll get you a bit more of a gradual fall off, but that is effectively how I achieve this result within this alley personal project. So that will again, help you to just kind of refine your compositions a little bit better. And in this specific project, again, the eye was being, I felt kind of uh, led over to the screen right a little bit too much just by how bright the volumetrics were within the scene. Granted, they weren't this bright. I did increase the strength to 10,000 a little bit beyond what it was in the final version just to, for illustration purposes. Um, but uh, that being said, that again helps us to kind of just direct the eye through the image and just have a little bit more control over our lights, which is definitely helpful. Uh, so another way to do this is we can actually just go to the light settings. It's not the same approach and it won't always work depending on the position of your subject and the light. But you can also, in this case, just given it's an area light and the subject is kind of off to the side of it, is we can just bring that spread down and then it'll just kind of constrict that area of effect uh, closer to the area directly kind of in front or underneath. Uh, what have you of the actual light itself. So that would have been another approach that may have worked in this specific situation. I just kind of liked the look that I was getting using the decay effect. Um, and so, yeah, that kind of gives you that added control to be able to achieve that in these types of scenarios. Uh, now with the map range node in this situation, it's not really doing anything specifically regarding the actual look of what I'm achieving here. Uh, I believe all it's doing is converting that ray length into a value so that it can actually be used within the rest of the setup. Uh, if you'd like to look a little bit more in depth into this setup, why it is set up the way it is and the ins and outs of it, definitely uh, check out a couple links in the description again uh, of uh, YouTube videos and a couple links to a couple external sites too that go over it. Uh, and similar setups pretty in depth. I believe there's this uh, fellow lighting artist, his name's Pow, I believe it is, if I got that right. And he has a YouTube video actually, which is great, it goes into this in depth. So definitely check those out uh, if you'd like. Uh, but what this can do, I believe, is act kind of as a limit to your far distance, similar to what you might uh, use in, say, Arnold. If you've used that, uh, there is a light filter. You can use a decay filter where you can actually um, adjust the near and far distance. So this kind of can act as kind of a limit to that. If you say change this to 10 and then you drag this black or right control point up all the way, we can't now 
uh, go beyond that, but we can act kind of within that range, right? But then if we max that out to say 100, uh, it's gonna now have that more full kind of area of effect within the image that it was having originally. So that's one way you can kind of use that. But that's how I used uh, the decay effect on this light within this scene. So in the next one, uh, I'm gonna go over a kind of more recent personal project where I've used this effect as well in a bit of a different way. All right, here we are in the next personal project where I used this uh, effect. So I used it here on these top lights within the garage. So here it is with the effect in play. Now here it is without it. So clearly without it, uh, with the lights at that strength that they're currently at, uh, I just felt like it was just affecting things too much. It was just brightening things overall, uh, just through the volumetrics as well, which just kind of felt unnatural and overly lifted. So that's why I decided to uh, implement the effect here. And I wanted this kind of like look where uh, you kind of just have that fog effect localized closer to the light source. So I'm just gonna jump into Pura for a second just to show you what I mean. So here's the uh, kind of look that I was going for in that regard where you kind of just get that fog uh, constrained more just closer to the light source itself, right? As you can see in these images. So I'm just gonna go back to Blender. Yeah, and so here it is without the fog at all. That's what it looks like, which, you know, once you add a glow, eh, that could work too, potentially. I just wanted to add something subtle in addition to that. Uh, so that's why I kind of added it uh, within this image. It might be a little strong, but regardless, I was pretty happy with how that specific effect worked out in this. So that's why I ran with it. So I'm just going to leave the rendered view and go back to Blender here. All right, so in Blender, these are the lights that I used. Uh, for that effect. Again, they're just volume kind of kick lights, as it were, within this scene. I just duplicated them from the original light source itself and added that decay effect to it. Uh, currently, it's unplugged just uh, so that I could do those renders to show you. Um, but what I had done was just connected it here again, just the same way I did in those other kind of examples. We just plug it into the strength. And then here, to kind of achieve it within this context, I really had to, as you can see, uh, bring in those control points so they were pretty tight up against each other. Um, but regardless, that got me the effect that I was looking for. So whatever works, right? And that's the setup that I used for it. So it's the same on both lights and that is that. So yeah, that's how I used it in this scene. Uh, in the next example, uh, I'm just going to show you this kind of effect quickly in a more kind of simplified version of this same scene. All right, so here we are in a simplified version of that exact scene. So we have our rendered mode active here. We can kind of see that kind of a constricted uh, area of effect of the volume lights. So I'm just gonna open that up and close that geo group and click on the volume light here. We can see that effect is currently active and doing its thing. So let's just turn off those original lights so we can more clearly see uh, what we're doing here. So there we go, that's exactly uh, the effect that we're uh, kind of going for. So now let's as you can see, it's set up the exact same as it was in the final file. So if we just drag that out, there we go. And what I've done here to kind of link them up so that when I change it on one, we see it changing on both is if you just control click both lights and then you go control L, uh, you can go link object data. And then that'll make it so that uh, when you change any values on corresponding lights, uh, it'll change it on all of them. So whether that's the color or the strength of the light the spread, any kind of node setup you have active on your lights, it'll change it uh, simultaneously on all of the linked lights. So if we just change the color, say to blue, this kind of teal color, it'll do that on all of them. So yeah, there we go. But yeah, again, so with that effect kind of in play here, connected to the light sources, we can just easily enough just drag this around. That's again, how it looked like by default. That's the effect it was having on the volumetrics. And if we just drag that in, slowly but surely we'll start to mask off that kind of bottom portion of the lights in the area that it's affecting as it kind of continues to become constricted to the kind of area closer to the actual light source itself and then again that was more of what i was going for so yeah and if we go to b spline we start to get that kind of again more progressional fall off as it works its way out through the bottom portion of the scene so it could have done that as well that might have worked too but uh, whatever floats your boat, as they say. Uh, but that is it for this example. In the next one, I'm going to show you how we can use this decay effect and other light sources to achieve various effects. 
So here we are within the final example where I'm going to show you how we can use this uh, decay effect uh, within various types of light sources within Blender, uh, kind of in more or less practical ways. Uh, so here we have a point light uh, that I've created uh, and I've just positioned it slightly in front of this sphere and applied that decay effect to it. It's hooked into that emission node with use nodes turned on. And so now what we can do here is just unconnect it, disconnect it. And the strength is matching up again with that value of the math node. These are maxed out so we don't see a difference. So now what we can do here is just kind of bring that right control point in. And again, we'll start to mask off that far distance area of effect of the point light as it becomes tighter and tighter and tighter to the actual light source. So there we go. You can imagine scenarios where you might want to say animate this effect and it'll kind of um, act as a kind of like extending out uh, kind of area of effect for that light source or kind of flicker effect. You might want to actually animate a noise if you want to animate a kind of fire flicker or something like that, but this might also do the trick for you. So what you can do here is what you would just right click on this, go insert keyframe, go down on the timeline, drag this up to one, uh, insert keyframe, and now as we drag on the timeline, you'll see that effect starts to kind of extend out as we've animated it to. So those are that's kind of one practical use that you can have for that. Let's just undo that, undo that. And you can also again invert this if you need to for whatever reason. This you might not need to do as much, probably less of a practical use for this. But you could do that and then you could say increase the strength of it using this value and create that kind of effect. Obviously, probably wouldn't use that as much, kind of an abstract look, but uh, if, you, if that's what you need, then that's a way you can kind of get that. So let's just undo that. And there we go. So next, let's turn that off and turn on this spotlight over here. You'll see it. Uh, if we go to the light settings, I've increased the radius from like 0.526, I think is the default, something like that, something pretty small. And I just did that to soften the shadows um, that are coming from that light source. Uh, and so then I've also applied the decay effect to it, as you can see here. So it's ready to go, uh, set to that kind of blue color and, uh, the blend is up all the way. If we drag that down, it's going to start to get a little harsher. It's not going to get fully hard edged shadows because we have that radius, uh, up. If we put that back down to 0.526, we're going to get those kind of harder edge shadows. Um, so let's, uh, undo that 2.5. Yeah, that's good. Blend is one. Great. And now what we can do here is just uh, disconnect this. So it's 5,000, that's 5,000. And those are maxed out. So if we just plug that in, we're not really seeing a difference. Not much of a difference. So what we can do here now, again, is just play with these control points to bring in that decay, that area of effect of that light. Uh, so it's affecting uh, less of our scene. So then what you can do here too is just maybe bring this one over a bit and then you can just kind of bring this one in. And then you can kind of imagine too, in a situation where you're using it like this, let's just bring that back over there. You could almost use it as if like, um, uh, it's like an abduction scene where you have like a flying saucer overhead and you're trying to kind of animate down this light source from the spaceship above so that the light kind of becomes more progressively far reaching as it reaches its subject boom, and then they get beamed up and you kind of animate this thing right up into that beam of light <laughs> and away that uh, cow or pig or person goes into the spaceship uh, for further experimenting. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of a couple different uses that you can kind of use the light decay effect for and it kind of just illustrates how you can use that same effect for different light types uh, within Blender. So pretty useful. And again, check out those links within the description. They go into further detail regarding this setup and this effect and different ways you can use it as well. Um, but anyways, hopefully you got something useful out of this video. Uh, if you did, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. Bye.